All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, have you heard the one about the 18-year-old lesbian who ha had sexual relations with a 14-year-old, is being prosecuted, and has now been made out to be a hero and a victim, more importantly, a victim, by the media as she's paraded around from show to show claiming that she's being picked on simply because she's a lesbian. Um, this case is, well, it's gone largely unnoticed uh, by the, 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 you know, the, the, the mainstream media as far as anything being wrong. It's just that she's been, been a victim. That's how she's been portrayed. So uh, Matthew uh, Philbin, who's the managing editor at the Media Research Center's Culture and Media Institute, has been writing about this. I've been reading his uh, pieces on uh, Newsmax, uh, Newsbusters, <laughs> Newsbusters.com. Uh, and... Um, uh, I'm sorry, newsbusters.org. And um, we welcome in Matt right now. Hey, Matt, how are you? I'm out of my mind. I mean, every, it, I have Noel Shepard on every week, and I'm t I can't even get your <laughs> website straight. Uh, newsbusters.org. Anyway, uh, right. tell us the story of uh, what's going on here. This girl, uh, uh, Caitlin Hunt, uh, she faces two felony charges, um, f a senior at a high school, uh, set to graduate, and she pressured a 14-year-old girl to be her quote unquote girlfriend and engaged in sexual activity with her. I don't see how this is any different than if a, 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 a boy did the same thing to a 14 year old girl. Um, it, it, and, and, and the media is making a champion, uh, they're championing her cause. How? Why? Well, it's the left wing media uh, outlets like Huffington Post. Um, Think Progress has taken up the cause. I believe the ACLU is involved now. Uh, but it's basically they're they're saying that she is a lesbian, therefore this is being prosecuted. This would not be prosecuted if it were an 18-year-old boy and a 14-year-old girl, um, which clearly is ridiculous. Um, you know, statutory rape is statutory rape, uh, or you know, felony battery is felony battery, and. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, there is a whole Internet campaign now, a free Caitlin campaign uh, of grassroots uh, lefties who want the charges dropped for this girl. Uh, her parents, very smartly, I think, decided that they were going to try her in the court of left-wing public opinion. And she is certainly getting her day in court that way. Well, and you left um, out, I think you left out MSNBC and, uh, and uh, Chris Hayes' show, right? Yes, Chris Hayes is on board now, too. Yeah. Um, they had a graphic while, while she was on, uh, they had a graphic that said LGBT injustice. Right. I mean, what, what, so, I, I, I don't even know how they do this with a straight face. If it's against the law, <laughs> I mean, and, you're, and it's, it's statutory rape, then it's against the law, and it's statutory rape. I would think if you're a supporter of gay rights in the LGBT community, you would want to support the prosecution of this, or you would want it to go away, and you wouldn't want to make an, ex uh, an example of her and make this case known and show that you're fighting on her side when she raped a 14-year-old. Allegedly. Yeah, right. would, I mean, I, I, I don't get that, it. You would think that real equality demanded that. Um, but, you know, equality isn't really what they're after. It's, it's special treatment. Um, you know, and the other thing is they're, they're painting this, tried to paint this as some sort of sweet love story. When what they were doing is meeting in the girls' room in the stall of a bathroom in a public high school to have sex. Uh, this is not, you know... This is not Romeo and Juliet. This is really uh, disgusting behavior. It's wrong on every level. If it were if it were a boy and a girl, or two boys, or whatever, so um, they really don't have a leg to stand on, except the fact that because she's a lesbian, she has this supposed immunity from prosecution, according to the left. Well, you know, and, and, and here's the thing. We're talking to Matthew Philbin, by the way, and uh, Matthew is the uh, managing editor at the Media Research Center's Culture and Media Institute here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Um, you know, th it would be one thing if, if we found out that the parents of the 14-year-old, you know, didn't care or didn't want to press charges or, or said it was okay. Not that it would make it legal, but nonetheless, but uh, that's not the case. Um, uh, th think, think Progress quoted the girl's mother talking about the 
underage girl's parents as saying, quote, they feel like my daughter made their daughter gay. They are bigoted religious zealots that see being gay as a sin and wrong, and they blame my daughter. Um, I mean, again, your daughter is 18, and their daughter is a minor. Duh. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But if you can throw, if you can play the gay card, and you can throw in words like religious bigots or zealots, um, that's catnip to the left. You get automatic sympathy. Doesn't matter what the real crime is or what the real issue is. That's that's how you, the game is played, and it's working perfectly for the parents. Um, Chris Hayes, uh, the host of uh, his own show on MSNBC, um, as we said, had the parents on and uh, and the girl, and um, said that uh, it was an incredible story. Uh, "Quote unquote," the on-screen graphic, like I said, tilted the segment by saying LGBT injustice. And Hayes made clear, as you put that, you wrote in your story, um, or actually this was a story by Jeffrey uh, Mayer on uh, newsbusters.org. Um, he said that, uh, quote, there were people at the news conference today, said Hayes, wearing T-shirts that said, stop the hate. And my sense from following this is that your belief is that the parents of the girl in question called authorities because this was a relationship between two teenage girls. Um, I, it, it, it's, it really, it's, it's inconceivable on so many levels. It's just, to me, mainstream America, if they're watching... Chris Hayes is showing I don't think they are, or however they hear <laughs> about this, mainstream America is not going to be sympathetic and say, you know, even if they favor gay marriage and all that kind of stuff and equality, when it comes to this, I mean, this, yeah. you know, th this is, this is rape. And this is, you know, 14-year-old girl, if it was a 12 or 13-year-old boy and it was a guy, then it would be rape and pedophilia. I mean, America doesn't warm to this. So I just don't understand the, the, the parents making an issue of this, you'd think they would hide their daughter or their daughter would hide in shame and take a plea or something and just let it go away. Instead, they're, they're making her, trying to make her into a symbol of a movement that apparently, I don't know if the gay community is behind this as much you could tell me, but, the, but the, the, gay, the supporters of the gay community and the gay movement in this country are making her a, a symbol, and the symbol is, of a, is a rapist. I, I just don't get it all. Well, look, it's, it's all of a piece with the project of the left uh, to, to remove all, all uh, standards for sexual behavior. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's simply a moral relativism that, you know, well, they say, uh, first they were trying to say that this relationship started when uh, Caitlin was 17, which is not the case. Um, it started when she was 18, but even if it had been, they're saying, well, how does it automatically become a crime the moment she turns uh, 18? Well, that assumes she should be doing it anyway. She should not be doing it anyway. These, look, these are 18- uh, and 14-year-old children. And, yes, an 18-year-old, uh, if, if you want to call them a child, uh, Obama calls 26-year-olds children. So, right. Your kids could stay on your, your children could stay on your uh, health care. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, look, this is, this is a part of the movement to say nothing is illegitimate. Right. Nothing right. is off the table. Well, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I don't want to imply that it's the same thing, okay? And I'm not. I don't know enough about this girl. I don't know enough about this. And, it, and, it, and, and we're not talking here about pedophilia. But you know that, and, and, and I, I am so upset, and I've written columns about this and done shows on it. There, there, are, there, there have been uh, gatherings, uh, 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 symposiums, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, by, uh, one was formed by a, or run by a group called B4U Act, the letter B 4U ACT. And the whole thing was to dumb down uh, pedophilia. Change the name, uh, you know, younger, attracted people, whatever the hell they want to call it. Pardon my language, that slipped out. I meant heck, um, <laughs> and, but I get emotional about this and and make it acceptable, um, make it decriminalize it, uh, and and that kids should be able to consent at this young age. If there's if they're in love, who are we to say no? So so there is an effort. I'm not saying it has anything to do with this girl, but it does. It is, I believe, germane to this topic and discussion to you know, dumb down and, and to, to kind of like mainstream, in a, in a sense, pedophilia. Yes, there absolutely is. And they are, there's nothing, 
that they want to be off the table. Pedophilia is fine unless it's a Catholic priest. Um, you know, this is, and I'm not saying this is everybody, but it, there is a sort of mindset out there. Oh yeah, there were college professors at this uh, symposium, yeah, and sure. your doc, you know, PhDs and all that. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, you know, the idea is that if we remove all standards of sexual behavior, then nobody will be judging anyone anymore, and it'll we we can all. Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I know. That's the, that's the, all right. Let me let me change topics. We're talking again to uh, Matthew Philbin. Uh, he is managing editor of Media Research Center's Culture and Media Institute here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, about an hour and fifteen minutes from now, they will convene at the Boy Scouts of America and eventually vote tonight. Uh, at least they're supposed to, on whether or not to lift the ban on openly gay scout members. Now, they're not going to touch the ban on openly gay scout masters, so even to some who I've already heard from, that even if they do lift this ban on openly gay scouts, it won't be enough because you're not going to allow an openly gay scout master. So let me ask you this. If they vote to hold and, 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 and abide by the Supreme Court case that they won 10 years ago and keep the ban... What will be the repercussions in the media tonight and tomorrow morning? Uh, the campaign will go on. Uh, this is this is the long hike. It's been 13 years since the Supreme Court upheld uh, the scouts' essentially right to assemble. Right, freedom of assemble. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, freedom of association. Yep. Um, and it's been a 13 year old year 13 year campaign ever since. Look, Peter Jennings was agitating for the scouts to do away with the, uh, the ban when he was still alive. It's, it's, it's a project of the media. They cannot stand the idea that there is a group out there that does not believe like they do, and there is a group that actually adheres to some sort of standard, and particularly as it, comes, as it goes with the whole gay agenda. And, um, you know, certainly CNN has been all over this, um, and they are constantly having scout mas- uh, you know, former gay scout masters on, former gay scouts on, uh, et cetera, to essentially agitate and say that the, the uh, scouts should join the 21st century. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you say the fight will go on. I just, uh, I, I also, I, I guess, was uh, looking to get from you. Uh, probably we're we're very like minded that the media will just blast the Boy Scouts as if they were the Catholic Church, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, they'll show no mercy starting, starting in the morning if the vote doesn't go the way they want it to go. Well, that's absolutely right. And if the vote does go the way they want it to go— It still won't be good enough. It will not be good right. enough. Right. And you could, that will be the next front. Right, because right. Because they, they do not want to stop at acceptance. They want full embrace. They yeah. want full celebration. And what the, what the Scouts— are trying to do with this compromise is say, well, maybe if we don't have gay scoutmasters, there won't be gay activism going on in in the scouts. We can just accept gay scouts for who they are. But the problem is uh, that's not good enough for activists. So, you know, activists never want to stop short of anything. Well, other I've, than- I've often said, Matt, and I'll leave you with this, that the people – and I don't believe that the gay activists in this country from the gay groups that we know of uh, and the people we hear from, I don't believe they represent the majority of gays in this country. Like, I don't believe, you know, the so-called black activists over the years, the Sharptons and the Jacksons, represent the a majority of blacks in this country. I don't believe that at all. So having said that, and as a preface, uh, let me just say that uh, these uh, gay activists and the atheist activists, who I don't believe represent most, athe- most, a- most atheists, they demand 100% total tolerance and acceptance, yet they exhibit none. Absolutely. That's what I'll leave you with that. Hey, Matt, thank you, sir. Pleasure talking to you. We'll talk again. Great talking with you. Thank you. That's uh, Matt Philbin, ladies and gentlemen, managing editor at the Media Research Center's Culture and Media 